engine burns petrol to get energy to move. In the same way, all living things need energy to carry out their activities. The human body, for instance, releases energy to do work. Where does the energy come from? From food. The food you eat is stored energy. It is oxidized in the body cells. As a result, waste products are formed. These waste products have to be removed from the body. How can this be done? How does food get to the blood cells and how are the waste products removed? Well, Eugenia, this is what we are going to find out in today's program. We are going to look at transport systems in living things. A transport system is necessary to carry useful materials like food and oxygen to the body cells and to take away waste products from these cells. In small organisms, like this one-celled animal that lives in fresh water, the whole body surface is in contact with its surrounding. Oxygen that is dissolved in the water enters the animal's body by simple diffusion. And carbon dioxide produced by this animal is got rid of into the surrounding water in the same manner. However, in large multicellular plants and animals that have groups of cells located away from one another, a conducting system is necessary to link these groups of cells. Let's see how green plants transport materials. Here's a beaker of water which is colored red with ink. We put a young balsam plant complete with its roots into the beaker. Let's see what happens after a few hours. The leaves are stained red. We cut a thin cross section of this stem and examine it under the low power of the microscope. I can see the stained parts arranged in a ring. The tissue that is stained red is called the xylem. Water and mineral salts are transported by the xylem vessels. These are non-living cells arranged one on top of another so as to form long columns. These columns start at the roots continue up the stem and end in the leaves. There are no cross walls between these cells. And thus, water and mineral salts are easily carried upwards as if going through long tubes. There is a certain force that causes this to happen. We'll come to it later. When the water reaches the leaves, it is distributed to all parts of the leaves by the xylem cells in the leaf veins. These veins branch and rebranch into tiny vessels which end in air spaces found among the food cells. 
some of this water diffuses into the fruit cells while the rest diffuses into the air spaces. As more and more water gathers here, diffusion of this water out of the leaf takes place through tiny pores on the leaf surface. Remember the force I mentioned just now that causes water and mineral salts to flow upwards through the plant? Well, it's triggered off by the loss of water from the leaves to the atmosphere. As the water from leaves goes out, more water from lower down moves up to fill up the empty spaces. And this causes the flow of a continuous stream of water and mineral salts from the roots up the plant to the leaves. The water and mineral salts are used by the leaves in the manufacture of food. What happens to this food made in the leaves? A simple sugar called glucose is the first food substance made in the leaves. This sugar is carried to other parts of the plant like the branches, stems and roots. The food may be used by these plant parts to release energy or it may be converted into forms like starch which is stored. I know that the xylem cells transport water and mineral salts but which cells transport this glucose? The phloem cells transport the glucose. Unlike the xylem cells, the phloem cells are living cells and have cross walls with pores. These allow liquid food to move downwards through the pores to all parts of the plant. Mr. Magnus, we've looked at the transport system in plants. What about the system in animals? In animals, food and oxygen also reach the cells of the animals in the form of solutions in a liquid transport medium. This liquid also serves to carry waste products from the cells. Now in the lower animals, water is the medium, while in the higher animals, blood is the medium. What is blood made up of? Blood consists of a fluid in which blood cells are found. The fluid part of blood, called plasma, is pale yellow and contains about 90% water in which many substances are dissolved. Two types of blood cells, namely red blood cells and white blood cells together with broken up cell tissue known as platelets are suspended in the plasma. What substances are carried by the blood and what are they used for? The plasma carries food from the small intestine to all parts of our body. The body cells use the food for energy to carry out their activities. Soluble proteins are also carried in the plasma. These proteins, together with the blood platelets, help in the clotting of blood. During clotting, a network of threads is formed to trap the blood cells. The blood becomes solid. In this way, the wound is sealed off to prevent further loss of blood and the entry of germs. The plasma also carries waste products like urea and carbon dioxide which are produced by the tissues. They are transported to the kidneys and the lungs to be expelled from the body. Some white blood cells 
make chemicals called antibodies. They fight against foreign invaders such as germs. And they may continue to circulate in the blood after the body has recovered to protect the body against further attack. Red blood cells contain a red pigment called hemoglobin. As the blood passes through the lungs, oxygen diffuses into the blood. This oxygen combines with hemoglobin to form an unstable compound called oxyhemoglobin. Blood containing oxyhemoglobin is known as oxygenated blood. It is carried to all the tissues of the body. Now I realize how important blood is to life. It transports many substances from one part of the body to another. Yes, and in order to do this effectively, blood must flow continuously or circulate round the body. The circulation of blood in mammals is often known as a double circulation. This means that for one complete circulation, blood has to pass through the heart twice, each time taking a different route. These two routes are known as the lung circulation and the body circulation. Both circulations depend on a very important organ, the heart. When the heart expands, it fills up with blood. And when it contracts, the blood inside is forced out. The heart is like a pumping station. Its main function is to pump or circulate the blood through the lungs and body circulations. Let's see the lung circulation first. Deoxygenated blood or blood without oxygen returns to the right section of the heart through blood vessels called veins. The heart then pumps the deoxygenated blood to the lungs. The lungs provide a fresh supply of oxygen to the blood and it is sent back to the left section of the heart. This completes the cycle for lung circulation. The blood vessels that carry blood away from the heart are called arteries. It branches into smaller arteries which rebranch into even smaller arterioles. Finally, they end up as very tiny blood vessels called capillaries. Every living cell in the body lies close to a capillary. Fluid from the blood seeps out through the thin capillary walls, bringing dissolved food and oxygen to the cells. Waste materials from the cells are, in turn, carried into the bloodstream by this fluid. The fluid is drawn back into the capillaries. The deoxygenated blood leaves an organ or tissue through the capillaries. They unite to form bigger blood vessels called veins. When the blood reaches the heart through the veins, the body circulation is completed and the lung circulation takes over. Mr. Magnus, I've heard about people suffering from a hole in the heart. Can you explain what it is? The heart of the human being has four chambers, two on the left and two on the right. You have learned that the right section of the heart contains deoxygenated blood and the left section contains oxygenated blood. These two types of blood should not mix because it would result in an inadequate oxygen supply to the body. Before a baby is born, he depends on the mother's blood circulation for food and oxygen. There's a hole or rather a valve in between the left 
and right sections of the heart. When the baby is born, the hole or valve automatically closes and the baby has its own blood circulation. Unfortunately, in some babies, the valves did not close when they were born. With an inadequate supply of oxygen, the baby appears bluish and weak. He cannot participate in any vigorous activities. Is there a way to correct this defect? Yes, the patient has to undergo medical treatment using drugs, failing which he has to go for heart surgery to seal the valve. The circulatory system in our body reminds me of the road transport system which links up the different parts of the country. The transport system helps in the development of the country. Quite right. Like the road system, the circulatory system of our body transports nutrients necessary for providing energy and raw materials needed for our body development. You have seen how important this system is to all living things. Now what happens if this system breaks down? Discuss this with your teacher. Goodbye.